Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. So up to now we have learned about the CSS Flexbox layout. We have learned different types of properties that are available in the Flexbox. We have seen it. So that is all about the complete Flexbox. So in the coming series we will do a practical implementation of website using the Flexbox layout. We'll try to see it. So first we are learning about all the concepts available in the CSS. So the another layout structure which is uh, very much important to learn is nothing but a CSS grid. So this is also one of the important concept which we need to learn in the CSS layout techniques. Now let's try to see about this CSS grid. Introduction to the CSS grid. <clears throat> CSS flexbox layout we have seen that it provides a one dimensional layout system. Whereas the CSS grid layout provides the two dimensional layout system controlling layout in rows and also in the columns. So in the flexbox layout we can either control row or a column not both the things so we can control either a single row or a single column that but not both rows and column whereas in the css grid it's a two dimension layout we can control both the layout uh, in rows and columns combinedly together over the years in the css there have been many methods to solve the website layout so for designing a website layout like header sidebar navigation main content so like this website layout structure there are many methods like flexbox layout is there floats is there so many layout table methods so like this slow so many methods are there for designing the website layout but with css grid not only it is it relatively straightforward but you have lot of options so with css grid it is very straightforward to design the website layout and also it has lots of options which we will try to learn in this series what can you do with the grid so grid layout has the following features so what is that grid and what we can do with the grid, grid means grid layouts have the following features let's try to learn <coughs> a grid can be defined with the rows and columns okay just like the flexbox layout so grid can be defined with rows and columns you can choose how to size these rows and column tracks or they can react to the size of the content so we'll try to see about these tracks grid areas grid cell these are all the things we'll try to learn it we'll learn the terminologies one by one in this video only but you need to understand you can choose how to size so the rows and column tracks or they can react to the size of the content so how whatever you want to do so they can react to the size of the content like min content max content we can use it and we can react to the size of the content both rows and columns we can do it direct children of the grid container will be automatically placed onto this grid so then the flexbox also the same thing the direct children of the flexbox uh, elements are called as in flexbox items in the same scenario here also the direct children of the grid container called as in grid items so automatically they are placed in the grid <coughs> or you can place the items into the precise location that you want so not only the placement automatically placement on the grid you can also place the particular items in a particular location so wherever you want to place the item you can place the item using the grid thing lines and areas on the grid can be named to make placement easier so we will be having grid lines which we will discuss it afterwards and areas also what is a grid area and all those things also the terminologies we will discuss we can name those grid line, line areas and also the grid lines we can name we can keep a name and we using that name we can make the placement easier so that is the main thing that is the main advantage in the grid so named grids we can use the named grid lines and we can place it with the names spare space in the grid container can be distributed between the tracks so the space which will be available like align items just for items how we have used it right so in the same scenario we can the spare space in the grid container we can also distribute between the tracks what is this tracks means i will discuss grid items can be aligned with their within their area so the grid item, grid items also can be aligned within their area so these are all the different types of features which are available in the css grid layout so one is the main thing which in the flexbox not existing is the named grids we can make the named grids it works both with the rows and columns you can work it both the rows and, uh, rows and columns we can do it grid comes with a bunch of new terminology as it is the first css that has a, had a real layout system so grid ha comes with a bunch of new terminologies new new terminologies are there which we will discuss it i will try to tell you you have learned it right track area lines like this so these are the new terminologies which grid has and it is the first css real layout system first one is the grid lines so we have seen about the grid lines what is this grid lines a grid is made up of lines so that is one thing which is which run horizontally and vertically 
grid lines runs horizontally and vertically if your grid has four columns then it will have five column lines including the one after the last column <coughs> like this it will be we will call it as grid lines i will try to show i will show you the example thing this is how it will be for example if you are having a grid this vertical are called as in columns so if you are having you now you are having four column layout this is a four column layout and two row two row and four column layout four column layout means the grid lines will be one two three four and the last one is also five so if you are having four column layout means then you will be having four plus one five grid lines and it is a two row column layout means it will be having one two and three two plus one something like three grid lines so like this we can we call it as these these all the these things as a grid line so this is one thing which you, which you need to understand it if it is a three column layout means then you will be having four grid lines if you are that means nothing but so three column layout means three plus one four grid lines you'll be having so plus one you'll be having and the another terminology is the grid track a track is the space between the two grid lines so that is the main thing so between the two grid lines whether it may be a row or a column grid line between the two grid lines we can we call it as a track a row track is between two row lines and a column track is between two column lines when we create our grid we create these tracks by assigning a size to them so if you try to see here this is a row track and column track means so like this so between two column lines so this is first and second two column lines you will be having column track and here between two row lines you will be having a grid track so this is called as a grid, grid track track this is one thing you need to understand it and the another one what we don't what i want to tell you is a grid cell grid cell is also some same thing only you'll be able to understand it a grid cell is the smallest space on a grid defined by the intersection of a row and a column tracks it's just like a table cell or a cell in a spreadsheet if you see here so this is the small box is called as a grid cell so this is one thing so grid track means the things between two <coughs> row lines row grid lines or the column grid lines so if you have two column grid lines the space between this are called as a grid track whereas the smallest section uh, this box is called as a grid cell and another one is the grid area so several grid cells together called as a grid area grid areas are created by causing an item to span over multiple tracks so here this is called as a grid area so multiple tracks it can take and we can call it as a grid area this is called as a grid area so they say a small part of this one is called as a grid area and the total grid we can call it as a grid area and the last one what i want to tell you is the gaps a gutter or alley between the tracks is called as a gaps tracks here tracks means between the two column lines or between the two row lines for sizing purposes they act as like a regular track you can't place content into a gap but you can span grid items across it so this is the thing so here you can call it as a column gap or this one is called as a row gap so this is called as a grid gap so this is also one of the important terminology we need to understand it so these are overall the new terminologies in the grid concept so grid gap we will be able to see the between the two grid tracks the space between the two grid gaps either it can be a column track or a row track the gap between those two tracks is called as a grid gap and another is a grid area so combining two tracks something either a row track or a column track combining two combining the tracks we can call it as a grid area another grid cell the smallest portion of the cell uh, is called as a grid cell and another is a grid track so between the two row lines uh, between the adjacent two row, row lines or the, between the two column lines we call it as a grid track and the last one is a grid line so this is the line thing so these are all the different uh, terminologies which you need to learn before which you need to know before learning the grid line grid concept so these these terminologies we will try to use it and we will design the uh, website layout structure Hope you understood about the terminologies in the CSS grid. What are the terminologies we are having? If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.